Yo, what is up, guys? It's your boy Spanish John from Philosopher's Stone Gaming back with another uh, unboxing video. Or, more specifically, we are boxing up 2022. You know, it took some time to get this right, which is why we're a little late on this. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna box up 2022 with what I think are some of the best games that I played throughout the year. So, to round up 2022, I have picked seven games across two platforms. Three if you consider some backwards compatibility involved. But before that, we'll run through some honorable mentions. Starting with uh, December's very own launch of a uh, Samurai Maiden. Pretty great game. And it's actually pretty decent on Switch. But I play that one on PC, personally. Shout out to Xenoblade 3 and Splatoon 3. Great new entries into the franchise. And there's a few more that I'm forgetting. Um, oh yeah. Well, actually, no. That one... That one you should have already seen in my last video. So, we won't mention that one this time again. So, yeah, that's it. For now. If I remember anything, I'll throw them in here while I'm doing the commentary. But to start off, you know, and ironically, it's what kicked off 2022. And uh, we're starting with Switch here. Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus, however you want to say it, it's all the same. Oh yeah, this is one of the first games out in 2022, and it was amazing. I wish they uh, actually made DLC for it, and not just a decent update via the Daybreak update. And I didn't have many Switch games for obvious reasons, but uh, closing up the Switch would be undoubtedly Pokemon Violet. Despite all its shortcomings, I'm having so much fun in this game. I'm not even lying. Next, we're going to move on to. Uh, PlayStation exclusives before rounding it out with multi platforms. So, if you give me a moment, I'll actually uh, refer back to some uh, old dated footage of some unboxings that I never got around to doing for you. And to start off the PS5. Exclusives we got Horizon Forbidden West, the special edition of that. Full game, steel book, mini artwork, digital soundtrack. 98 gigabytes. That thing is insane. That means these are two 50 gigabyte discs. That's intense. Fun fact, the first game came out the end of February, but was quickly overshadowed by uh, the release of Breath of the Wild versus uh, this one came a few weeks after Legends overshadowing that so Sony got their, uh, their one up on Nintendo here we are first with the very beautiful steelbook
And now the game discs themselves. Of course, you can see the vouchers. Not game disc, apparently. Did they ever intend to maybe have a physical soundtrack? You can also see kind of the sloppy work I did back then. Not t too terrible. You know, it's not the first unboxing I've done before the start of the channel, so we got better and better. Well, not the best, but. And then, the Art of Forbidden West. So yeah, the final journey in his uh, new saga. It's just look at that. That's crazy. Ninety-one gigabytes, and that's before updates. And through the power of some movie magic, we are back to uh, unleash the insides. Unleash the power of the gods. Bam. So, your standard PS5 disc, which is now UHD 4K discs, if you weren't aware already by now. That is pretty sharp, damn. You know, content and advertisement. Pretty sick background. Let's uh, pull it out. It's not a reversible cover art, but it is still inside art. I wonder what we're getting spoiled on here. No context spoilers, though, so it doesn't matter. Well, I hope you enjoyed those. Uh, early unboxing videos now back to uh, modern times so to speak and to finish rounding off doing boxing up 2022 we're gonna close them off with the multi-platform titles you know except for this very first one sadly not available on switch uh, you could play these pretty much on any platform Though know, for one reason or another, still prefer the PS5 versions of these. Although, I will say something when it comes to one final one. And, also ironically enough, these are coming at you in release order. Starting off with... Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. It is like... This is like the Loki to the Final Fantasy 1 and... Spoiler alert, because of the past two DLCs, now Final Fantasy 2. Might even be setting up the origins of the city itself. So, you definitely should play this. Now, some of the jank is still there that you'd expect from a Team Ninja game, but it is still a much better product than anything Square has put out, in my personal opinion, like Square directly. Because, yeah, you see their logo, but this game was 100% made by Team Ninja. I do love the, uh, traditional throwback design here and uh, there you see our game's protagonist Jack 
Let's uh, take a peek back here. By popping off the disc. And it's just a logo much bigger, much more traditional. It's semi reversible since you can see the name on the spine, but we'll leave the regular cover for now. And jumping right into it next, the long awaited release of the Skywalker Saga Lego. Now, this one I would have gotten on Switch, but I do remember the uh, the initial release was even that was the worst one. But every version suffered some sort of thing. But it is the most definitive collection of the Lego Star Wars games, and 100% recommend this to anybody. No doubt, no need to play this. Which I'm surprised I haven't done a gold edition yet. Like I know it launched with one, but like a re or like a relaunch. Yeah, Lego advertisement. Nothing cool. But yeah, definitely play it. You you basically got nine games in one. You know, because I'm pretty sure the first three games were actually individual releases, then they got re-released. Then we just got the complete saga, which at the time was one through six. Eventually, the seventh movie came out, and that got a game. And then they took a lot of backburning, and then because seven did the biggest revamp to the entire Lego series as a franchise. If you didn't know, you know we're gonna go on a little tangent here, but the early games, hardly any voice acting, mostly just grunts. Then they started ripping some lines from movies. Then eventually they did full voice acting. And then number seven, from Star Wars specifically, the one that had like the best shooting mechanics and over the shoulder stuff. And it is what uh, they did to the older versions of the Lego Star Wars games in particular, since they haven't done anything else really, I don't think, in a while. Other than, well, technically they did revamp Harry Potter, but I haven't played that yet. But anyways, yeah, this was it. This was the reason. And on to the last one. Now this last one has been my absolute favorite, and before Pokemon came, was the only thing I was playing. Like, I even put Destiny down, and honestly not going back to it for a while, but... long awaited return and like I said I would comment on something earlier this I would have gotten this on Xbox honestly it's just it just happened to be this way but at least long term doesn't break up the tradition because pretty much every title has been on a PlayStation system is none other than Star Ocean 6 the Divine Force there's a dual pro tag story. And I am just about done. Because again, Pokemon took me back. With playing as Raymond. And then we'll play as Leticia. And that one I think I'll stream for you guys. We got a several series planned for you guys. But this game has been amazing. Much like Sonic Frontiers to some, or Pokemon Violet, despite some of its shortcomings. Lol. Oh, well, well, I'm gonna keep that in, but uh, clearly the last thing I was playing, Destiny not included, before Star Ocean, was clearly the first Horizon game. Which I don't remember if I mentioned in the voiceover or not, but yeah, I never had finished the first one. Like, I was near the end, but that's because I've literally 100%ed everything. Because if I remember correctly, you can literally 100% that game in, the f in one run through. There is not a, a second playthrough required, at least before the Frozen Lands DLC dropped. 
So, yeah, that's what I was doing. So I can finally move on to the second game in the series. But we'll, we'll jump back. We'll start over. And uh, this is what you were supposed to see in here originally. Honestly, really cool looking disc. Unfortunately, the rest of the cases could be left to said much desires. And for some of you that might comment, this is a Square Enix game. Well, you know, unfortunately because Enix merged with Square, one day did, but I promise you, this is very much handled by the Enix team, the Star Ocean team, not the regular teams of Square, which makes this a very good game. You know, no hate towards Square, but everything has been literally hit or miss. And let's not even get started with the whole pixel remaster physical scandal that just happened a few weeks ago. But, that is all. Thank you for tuning in. And this has been my roundup of 2022. We are, for all terms and purposes, boxing it up. But trust me, we'll, I will be finishing most of these games. Lego's probably not going to get finished. I'm not going to lie to y'all. But I've already beaten it. Over the course of time. The only thing I haven't really beaten is 8 and 9. Because before this we never had 8 and 9. So it's not really something I'm too worried about. Toodles. We'll see you on uh, Thursday's video. And maybe even Saturday's video.